Dear God, I hate my job. They say it's always sunny here in Evil as opposed to Philadelphia because fuck that place. I don't know. My name is Kyle Ryder. I'm 22 years young, I'm a proud college dropout, and I've been working for the same goddamn call center in the same goddamn part of town for the same goddamn company for two and a half years of my fucking life. Even though I put in two and a half years of my life for a promotion, nothing's ever happened. But that's gonna change. The company party is going to be held at Big Jim's Bolorama, a place where you can drink beer, bowl with your chums, and legally pee in the drinking fountain. And that's where I'm going to hit it. I'm going to seduce my supervisors and fuck my way to a promotion. I don't care if I have to sleep with Doki the Talking Donkey. I'm getting that promotion, goddammit. It's the American way, and if I don't do it, that smelly-ass Hawaiian piece of shit will. It's business as usual here in Decker Industries where you get decked. I call up small businesses and ask if they want to participate in an economic survey. Usually I get one or two completes, which is par for the course in an eight-hour shift, but not for Jason. Jason's finishing up his usual shtick. If you don't participate in this survey, then I'll call you in the next ten minutes. And then another ten minutes. And then another ten minutes. And then another ten minutes. Until you perform that damn survey. What's that? You want to be on the do not call list? You poor fool. We're a survey research company. There is no do not call list. <laughs> Let's get started. I thought you'd see things my way, grandmother. He completes his survey and then writes on the board that he completed another survey. Everyone, including myself, have to snap their fingers because in the employment agreement, we're legally obligated to snap our fingers whenever someone accomplishes a complete for some stupid fucking reason. That said, he nudges my elbow in hopes of gaining my attention. What is it, Jason? Hello, Kyle. I hear you're trying to go for the promotion. Uh, yeah? Excellent. Well then, I hope to see you get that promotion. Uh, no offense, Jason, but what the hell are you aiming for? Oh, don't worry, old chap. Uh, we're friends now? I'd like to think so, but I'd like to also think that I'd have a friend in a very high place, as you getting that promotion benefits me in the long run as well. Yes. Um, Jason, whenever you say yes like that, you have a boner, and I don't really... Can you... Can you please do something about that? Huh? Oh, sorry, my old chap, but I wanted to let you know that Keith is available. He got divorced, and on his Face of Friends profile, he wrote down on his current mood is sensual. Ah, uh, look, I may be bi-curious, but I'm not going after Keith, okay? I don't care how much cushion for the push it is. I'm not going after someone so fat that whenever I look at him in the back of my mind, I just go, that's no move. Well, I suggest you do something about it, old chap. David is doing something about that. David? David has already invited Keith out for dinner. Kalaiki Ali? That fucking Hawaiian? The asshole who likes showing off his nipples? That motherfucker! Everyone looks at me in shock and awe. The fuck are you all looking at? Looks like someone's got a bad case of the Mondays. I unplug my mouse and peg that son of a bitch right between the eyes. Fucking idiot. How dare he antagonize me? After that, I hear a familiar voice. Whoa, Jesus, calm down there, cowboy. Oh, hey, Jeff. Jeff is my best friend and close confidant. We went to college together. In fact, it was Jeff that got me this god-awful job to begin with. Like me, he's also sick of working in this dead-end job. We've been working together on this million-dollar app that revolutionizes the way you look at pornography. He hands me my mouse, and I say, Thanks, partner in crime. <laughs> Anytime, old friend. How you feeling, Jeff? Uh, I'm a little blocked. You're blocked? Are you constipated? I told you eating those gas station bananas wasn't a good idea. They look so delicious. Delicious? One of them had a bruise so big that you could mistake it for a fucking glory hole. Okay, okay, okay. I wanted to see if you were up for going to Old Man McGinty's. Wait, what now? Dude, I still have like another hour and a half on my shift before I can take a break. <laughs> no one's gonna care. Very well. And what's Barry gonna do? Dude, the company security? They're gonna send automated combat bot dudes after us. So what? You got your gun, right? I got mine. Yeah, I always have mine. So? I'll just botch the record saying that the combat dudes were acting out of, I don't know, uh, self-awareness? <sighs> yeah, alright, I guess I can buy that for a dollar. Today's dead as shit anyway. Jeff warns me that the silent alarm goes off. So I should start preparing for some combat bots and dinklebot dudes.
We make it to Old Man McGinty's coffee shop in Delhi. God only knows why the FDA hasn't shut him down. I mean, even though he's been in business for over 50 years, every day of that fucking 50 years, the man has his hand down his pants, publicly masturbating. I mean, yeah, his food tastes great and all, but he's gotta be paying someone off. Anyway, Jeff goes up to him and says, Excuse me, Old Man McGinty? Uh, I'm kind of constipated. Do you have any food that'll take care of that? Or a laxative or something? Um, of course I do, you young whippersnapper. I have my patented dynamite chili. Made with ghost peppers, volcano beans, and ground-up laxatives. At best case scenario, you'll be able to get into the restroom. But on worst case scenario, it'll make it explode worse than the Challenger. Hmm. Well, all right, I guess that sounds fine. Hey, you want anything? Um, I'll just take a small cup of java. Uh, what, that and a small coffee, please? Yes, of course. Uh, Old Man McGinty, is there any chance you can hand it to us not using your left hand, considering, you know, where it is? It's in my pocket! Yeah, but you're always bragging about your dong size. Um, no! What? Do you really think I don't jerk off with my right hand, you young whippersnappers? Ho <laughs> ho! I masturbate furiously with both my hands, and I don't know why you're taking offense to this. You know, you can tell a man's character by the size of his breasts. The smaller the pair, the weaker the character. McGinty, what the fuck are you talking about? Kyle, don't question me. Remember that last time when he was talking about how lavender should be added to the rainbow? Just went off in an hour to rant about that shit. Just nod and say yes. Um, yes, uh, sure. Sorry, McGinty. Can we just have our stuff? Very well, boys. Enjoy and remember my motto. If it's edible, then there's gotta be some way to fuck it. Jeff and I grab a seat overlooking the call center. At first, we were weirded out by the fact that our, well, containers were kind of sticky, but we don't question that because we really don't want to see those skeletons in that closet and just ignore it and start eating away at our stuff. Well, Jeff eats his chili. I drink my coffee. I, don't, I can't eat coffee, obviously, literally. Anyway, we start talking about random shit, then shift the conversation over to our pornography app. As the conversation progresses, Jeff spots Lorna on the corner of his eye and signals her over here. I get angry and say, Jeff, what the fuck are you doing? What? Why do you... I don't want to talk to Lorna. Why? Because she's a part of that thing across the street? Thing across the street? It's a sex cult, Jeff! Sex cult? Schmex cult? It's a tax-exempt church? Hey, 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 don't argue semantics with me. Look, I thought you might want to infiltrate that place anyway. You know Catherine's a member now. Cat... Catherine? Cat? Catherine? Uh, yeah. You okay? What? I, I mean, get... I don't understand why you get all foamy when you think about things like that that really infuriate you. Infuriate me! Dude, Catherine literally revolves around a lot of cat puns. And she got rejected from Last Chance's dating services. And when you get rejected from that online dating service, you know your life is sad. Look! Hey... She's your supervisor. You want to go for that promotion, right? Well, yeah, it's just... Dude, swallow the pill. It's no big... Oh. Oh. Oh, God. Jeff, are you okay? Dude. Oh, God, it's poking. I gotta go to the bathroom. Jeff scurries off. Well, actually, scurries off is kind of an understatement. He rolls around at the speed of sound in the direction of the fucking bathroom. Man, that chili really does hit hard. Either way, Lorna comes over, and I say... Ugh. Hello, Lorna. Hello, Kyle. It's so good to see you. Handsome again, as usual. Uh, I didn't think of a time in my life where I wasn't handsome, but thanks for the compliment. Lorna's always had a crush on me. To be honest, I kind of did too, up until she became part of that sex cult thing across the street. I mean, for God's sakes, they literally have a commandment where you have to wear sandals and socks when you enter the bed temple. Whatever the fuck that is. Uh, so, uh, how is everything? Fantastic! Thank you for asking, Kyle. Did you hear? You recruited Catherine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bet she's, uh, driving you crazy with all those cat puns. Oh, quite the contrary, Kyle. Really? Yeah. You see, we're making her soft kitty purr, purr, purr. I see. Well, um, that's, uh, nice, I guess. Thank you. 
You should join us, you know. We're having our introductory lunar orgy tomorrow at noon. Um, obviously, I mean, you did say it was a lunar. Don't interrupt me, sorry. And you should come along. We have a free buffet of all-you-can-eat chicken from Mother Clucker. Um, well, I, I don't know. It's just... To be honest, Mother Clucker chicken was never really my cup of tea. Though, to be fair, I am partial to trying their new all-American chicken tits. I know. I've heard. I know your favorite food is the TMT sub from Sub Foods, which is why I secured a two-foot-long sub just for you. Oh, gee. Thanks, Lana. That's really nice of you. Anytime, Kyle. Well, wait a minute. Um, two questions. Shoot. Uh, don't they need a professional headshot as well as a 500-word essay as to why I should be included into your little, uh, church? And two, how do you know what my favorite food is? Oh, don't worry about that, Kyle. I already submitted a headshot on your behalf and a 500-word essay. Well, not really a headshot. More like a video I took of you without your knowledge. What? Did you just admit to stalking me? As much as I'd like to answer that question and the other one, Kyle, it looks like my pager's going off. The alien mothership has landed, and the church needs me to strip naked and get in lard. Wait, wait, what? Lorna hurries off and exits the call center via the main entrance. Well, I have my reservations on this sex cult thing. I do wonder how much Tang is going to be available at this new introductory orgy thing. Plus, the prospect of free food is very, very enticing. I mentally prepare the time for said nooner. Tomorrow at noon. Gotcha. I can't wait for free food. Oh, don't be so judgmental. How many of you people went out on a date with someone you know you weren't going to give the time of day to, but wanted the free food anyway? <sighs> it's back to dialing to random small businesses as usual. I get one customer that really irritates me. In fact, I get so angry that I curse the son of a bitch out, tell him to go kill himself, and hang up the phone as soon as I could. Then I shoot the computer monitor for good measure. Everyone looks in shock and awe. Shut the f- God damn it, shut up, everybody. Um, none of us were talking? Now you were. I take out my mouse from its USB port and peg that son of a bitch again right between the eyes like I did earlier. But then, the call center goes silent. I hear footsteps. Oh, Christ. It's one of my six bosses. It's Barry. Barry Whitaker is one of my six bosses. He just loves to show off his authority, even though he brings nothing good to the table and is a total fucking bore. Hey, Kevin. Ah, uh, my name's Kyle, Barry. Just like it was yesterday. Just like it was two weeks ago. Just like it was the first day that I got hired two and a half years ago. Um, yeah, okay there, Kevin. We have, uh, something to talk about here. You see, uh, destruction of company property is one thing. But, uh, cursing out a potential client, that's uh, crossing the line there. Looks like, uh, you need to, uh, go back for, uh, retraining. How's that sound? Are you, are you fucking serious? Dude, I have, I have a lot of seniority over these fucking idiots. I'm not a fucking idiot, and you threw your mouse at me again, jerk. You fuck. <laughs> that foaming out the mouth there. Yeah, it's a classic sign of workers' rage. Looks like we got, a. Uh, You just fart? A little bit. We got a clear bad rage, so I'm gonna meet at the training room. Ah, fucking course. I've been led into the training room. Dear God, I never thought I'd see this place again. I mean, I've been working here for two and a half years of my fucking life. Ah, oh, God, I'm starting to sound like the intro, aren't I? Anyway, the training room is where new hires go to train. You know, learn the systems, learn the script, learn their shtick, and all that crap. I take a seat in front of the widescreen TV because, of course, I fucking have to. Barry then says... Okay there, Kevin. It's Kyle! Yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna play a video on workplace rages and how you can calm those rages. So, let's, uh, get this happening. Barry puts in the video. Fail. God. I can't believe... For fuck's sake! A video? I mean, what the... Uh, uh, <coughs> gotta think about it. He then scurries off. My god, he really doesn't want to watch this training video, but then again, who does? Oh, shit. We're doing this, aren't we? Oh, 
Hi, I'm the Vincent dude. I'm the one that helped Count Baron von Dinkelberg kidnap the twins from Unspecified Estan. Now I'm under court order to help you get better at you being better at your job by telepathically communicating to you. If you're wondering how I can telepathically communicate information directly to you while being recorded, as recordings literally require audio, then you're looking too far into it, you idiot. Wait, is this a new training video? Because those twins were recently kidnapped. Don't interrupt me, you idiot. How the hell can you hear me? You're a recording. Shut up! But it's just... Ah, screw it. Over the next few minutes, we're going to be talking about the different types of harassment and why it's not suitable in the workplace. Harassment? This is supposed to... You know what? I'm not even going to ask questions. Good. You see, harassment in the workplace was fairly common and encouraged back in the 1950s. And in certain modern-day nightclubs. And strip clubs. And pornography. And comedy stylings. And pretty much all of spring break. Um, and food. And, well, you know what? It's still around. But the thing is, America is growing. You see, Americans started to realize the importance of having women in the workplace, uh, except for when it comes to matters of women in the military. But they've also known that each culture brings something new to the table, except for when it comes to matters of immigration. But they also know that every race is considered equal, except for when you step on the matter of white privilege. But I'm trailing off topic again. How about facing the camera? How about no? We're going to show clips of discrimination, power harassment, verbal abuse, and sexual harassment. Like that one lady who reported me. That fucking bitch. Her ass was hanging out. I'll tell you she was fucking asking for it. I mean, roll the clip. Discrimination. Human, you human. Zombie sits here. You human, go away. Verbal abuse. Hey, your head is weird. Power harassment. Jimmy, if you don't get those TPS reports to me by the end of the day, then you're fired. You know, I never realized how ugly my hand is. I mean, was I always born with this ugly hand? I mean, this is a hand only a fucking mother can love. I swear to God, what the fuck is up with... Now that we've seen all those examples, let's talk about ABR. Always be respectful. To be respectful, one must maintain eye contact. Be truthful, but not too truthful, because, let's face it, if everyone was truly honest with each other, the world would be on fire within an hour. And finally, be courteous, and never resort to cheap name-calling. Oh, cheap name-calling. I miss you. I love you, cheap name-calling. You were so easy. Just hit it and quit it. But, oh no, the social justice pricks and the PC police clipped our balls. Oh, I can't use cheap name-calling, it hurts our feelings. Listen, motherfucker, sticks and stones break bones, words will never hurt you. Pieces of goddamn garbage, if you don't like it, why don't you just go back to... And now let's look at an example of ABR. Excuse me, sir, but could you spare some change for this old lady? I'm sorry, ma'am. I already used all my change on myself buying food. Can I have some of that food, please? I haven't eaten in days. No. And there you have a good use of ABR. Notice how the person maintained eye contact. He also had good posture, which counts as extra credit in my book. And on top of that, didn't resort to name calling. He didn't call that lousy, cheap leech on society for what it is. A fucking dumb bitch that is a poster child for voting yes on Proposition 32. I mean, that concludes this video. Hopefully you learned that workplace harassment is wrong. I hope you enjoyed this workplace training video. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go fight this court order. Oh, right, I forgot. Uh, this uh, training video was brought to you by a grant from your mother because she had sex with your dad, and by Tarville cigarettes because, hey, you don't need both your lungs. What do you mean I don't get a paycheck? Fuck you, you piece of shit! Well, that was a colossal waste of time. I'm not even going to question why there wasn't a clip on sexual harassment, considering how they said there was going to be a clip on sexual harassment. Well, whatever. It's clock out time anyway. I get to the front of the call center. I see the receptionist has food on the table. I also see Angela looking down at that receptionist. Oh man, Angela's the one person you don't want to break the rules to. She is a stickler for that shit. And she's also one of my six bosses. You... There have food at your workstation? Oh, Angela, please. I, I, I beg you. 
No. Take him to the dungeon. What? No! As the receptionist gets dragged off, Angela approaches me. Hello, Kylo. Hello, Angela. I completely forgot how Angela and Jason sound so fucking similar. Ah, I see you're gonna... Yes, I am, Kyle. I'm going to get the HR paddle out and make an example. Would you like to come watch? Um... You know what? I think I'm gonna pass. Oh, well, I tried. Eddie! Eddie! Eddie, he's over here. Wait, what, Eddie? Yes, Eddie was looking for you. Um, okay. Eddie's one of my other six bosses. I'm not cool with him, but I don't necessarily have a problem with him. He comes up to me and says, Oh, Kyle, I was looking all over for you. Yeah, I was in the training room watching a goddamn training video. Really? Which one? You know what? Doesn't matter. I need your help. Ah, uh, with what? Well, I can't say out loud. They're listening. Um, who's listening? Oh, right, I forgot. Ever since Eddie's place got broken into by a bunch of thieves and stole his consoles, he's been a paranoid wreck. They, them, they, them, them, they, they, them, they, 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 them, 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 they. But, just, listen to me. I need you to meet me tomorrow at noon. I know you start at three. Well, you are starting at three tomorrow, right? Uh, yeah, it was by special request. Why am I coming at noon, and why do you have that look in your eyes? Because I need you to meet me tomorrow at the back of the call center. The back? Are you serious? The back of the call center is forbidden from all us call center agents. Getting caught going back there means we get to go to the HR dungeon. I really don't want to feel Angela's path. Eddie, do you realize what you're asking of me? I know. I know. I know. But... There's $500 in it for you, and I'll help you get in good with the other supervisors for that promotion. After all, it's no secret that you're trying to go for the promotion by trying to seduce one of us. How the hell do so many people know that? Well, you can thank Jason for that. Jason? What the fuck? How the... Jason told you? What the hell, Jason? Looks like I gotta confront someone. Uh, you can do that on your own time, Kyle. Besides, if you're lucky... I might just let you ride my unicorn. Unicorn? Is that the name you have your dick? Yep. Well, uh, to be fair, I am kind of bi-curious. And Eddie's slender frame is, uh, kind of... Nah, I could, I could go with that. I, I don't know, Eddie. The choice is yours, Kyle. Just make sure they don't find out about your choice. Um... You don't need to worry about that, Eddie. Eddie hurries off and gets into the ventilation system, because of course he fucking does. Shit. Decisions, decisions, though. On one end, I go to the fucking sex cult, <sighs> organized by a goddamn stalker, and talk to the most annoying woman on the planet with the dumbest cat puns, or I risk getting caught by HR helping someone so paranoid that you might mistake him for a right-wing conspiracy theorist. God damn it! Well, at least I can debate my options by sleeping on it. Uh, I head home for the day. End of day one.